Okay. Uh, Sangeeta is a chartered accountant, management accountant, uh, and uh, uh, has an executive education program from Harvard Business School. She is a high performance business coach from the International Coach Federation and the author of two bestsellers, What the Finance and the Power of High Performance Coaching. Uh, and a glance at the, uh, at the unknown, unknown, she's a professional speaker and an art of living practitioner. You know, you may wonder what else, <laughs> you know, there's just so much and such a 360 degree uh, uh, personality she is. Uh, she has uh, many accolades uh, to her credit. She was awarded the uh, leading woman chief financial officer. She was awarded as India's most influential woman in finance. She was awarded innovator in finance at the International Women's Leadership Forum. She was awarded the 100 uh, Inspiring Authors of India. She was also awarded Outstanding Professional by FIKI. She's an Executive Director and CFO of Dun & Bradstreet Technologies. She's an Independent Director in IFB. Uh, she's a Board Advisor for Startups, uh, Board Director, International Coach Federation, Chennai, and a Board Director of Professional Speakers Association of India. Uh, I'm very, very happy uh, to have Sangeeta uh, speak today. I don't want to stand between you and Sangeeta. Uh, over to you, Sangeeta. Thank you for making the time. Thank you, Sandhya. So I just want to know, is, is my camera on? I mean, are you guys able to see me or is it just an audio stuff? We are able to see you, Sangeeta. Your camera is on. And it's okay. nice to okay. see you. Okay. okay, lovely. So I wasn't too sure. So I just checking because I was hoping I can see you guys as well. Okay. Okay. So I some think... of us have not on our camera yeah, so because I, I, the I, band. Um, yeah. So I'm not uh, from sure. Uh, so how I... Camera on. We are not able to get the audio clarity well. So some okay. of us have switched the camera. Okay. No worries. No worries. Okay. So good afternoon and welcome to everybody on this uh, webinar. I must say, Sandhya and team have been a uh, a visionary in doing this uh, webinar you know online especially in the current uh, scenario and the situation so i think it has been a great decision that uh, we decided to go online with this and uh, i'm really pleased to e meet everybody and i hope you know everybody's staying safe and probably like working from home in this current scenario so having said that i mean i would like to you know straight away get started with the topic which is channelization of high performance so even before we get started why is this topic of relevance today now why high performance simply because i think every organization wants high performance in you know whatever domains they are into people look for high performance simply because it's only then the organization can become a high performing organization so it's important to see how each of us can become a high performer and the beautiful thing is the truth or rather the secret is everybody is a high performer it's just that sometimes we are not aware of our own potential and you know to see how we can maximize our own potential to see how each of us can become a high performer in our walk of life so that is why it's important to channelize the high performance in you so that you can become a high performer in whichever area of your choice so let me start off with uh, a real life story like sandhya mentioned i'm a high performance business coach and i also coach i mean not just businesses but also individuals you all i'm sure know of pv sindhu the badminton champion the olympic uh, medalist and everything so she's bought us a lot of florals and undoubtedly sindhu is a high performer now you may wonder if one needs to be like you know an olympic champion to become a high performer so let me tell you another real life story this is about a guy called anand anand is an engineer by profession and extremely passionate about music and anand was also a uh, very gifted and talented because he could uh, he can play uh, you know like an a cappella and he produces uh, percussion sounds when he can uh, when he plays uh, you know just from within and it's it's beautiful you wouldn't actually think it's created by man you know you actually think uh, somebody is playing a percussion instrument 
But Anand on the other side was very lazy, though he was extremely passionate about music, very lazy, uh, you know, didn't have time. And, you know, he was always procrastinating, uh, though he had this talent and he wanted to give performances. What Anand felt was like, you know, I'm probably not up to it. And uh, he wasn't going for his classes. He wouldn't practice, you know, and, and he would take refuge under the fact that uh, he didn't have sufficient time to practice and uh, get himself upgraded. So it was at that point in time that uh, Anand came to me and wanted me to coach him. So I coached Anand for about, I think, eight months or so. And Anand then blossomed so beautifully. Anand realized that what was actually coming in his way was his fear of failure. So he was worried that, you know, if he goes up on stage and he performs and he, I, you know, people don't appreciate it or he makes a mistake and people just say, you know, what is it? Is no big deal or things like that. He was very scared to face such people and such comments. And that is what deep down was coming in his way. So after the couple of coaching sessions, Anand started to transform for the better. He started, you know, going for his classes regularly. He was practicing. He ensured he made time. He wasn't hiding behind excuses. And he started giving his performances. And he did a fabulous job. He invited me for one of them as well. And it was really so nice to see him come out. So Anand is now a high performer, I would say, simply because Anand has moved notches up in his level of performances. Now, if you take the Anand a couple of months ago and Anand at present, his performance level has increased tremendously in this particular area, which is music. So not necessary that everybody has to be, you know, an Olympic medalist to become a high performer. You can become a high performer in whatever walk of life, whatever area that is of your choice. So that is totally up to you. So if we were to get down to the grassroots, what is high performance? High performance, simply put, is achieving superior results by performing at a high standard and as per targets set by your own self. Of course, in a business context, it could be that your boss you know, giving you set targets to achieve and so on. But if you are truly striving to improve your own self and your own performance in, you know, whichever domain, that is nothing but high performance. So simply put, getting better at whatever you do. You are probably benchmarking your own performance. You are the judge. You need to see where you need to scale up and how you need to improve and what you need to do. So you are the judge. You are the one who's performing, and at the end, it's you who's going to be happy by be, by uh, performing at a high standard and thereby becoming a high performer. So it's totally up to you. So I think you must acknowledge the fact that the onus lies on you, the interest is yours, the desire is yours. So only then you'll be able to get start performing at higher levels. So that is on high performance. So. Let's now talk about, you know, as I say, the five wives and the one husband. You're probably wondering what context it has. So I say the five wives are what, why, who, where, and when. And the one husband is, of course, how. So I think I just explained on to say what is high performance. So let me repeat that again. So performing at a high standard to achieve superior results as per target set by you, that is high performance. So we know what high performance is. So why do you think high performance is needed? I wish this was an interactive chat. I know I could hear everybody, but it's. I find it quite funny that I'm, I'm just talking to the computer, but nonetheless, so why high performance? Like can, I said, actually, we can open up the audience also to speak actually, Sangeeta. So oh, if great. you would want to take a pause, ask the audience to reflect, that is possible. Um, okay. I think the way the, the the way it works is that there is a chat screen where the audience can reflect on their oh, yes. feedback, right. read on that screen. So you okay. can prompt the audience, uh, comment okay. as you speak. So you don't okay. feel alone. Right. Great. That's awesome. So maybe somebody would like to chat to say, why high performance? You know, why should you be a high performer? And why do you think organizations look for 
high performance. So any takers? Mm. So due to the public, we will take we are having some crosstalk on the line looks like uh, uh, yeah right okay so probably, yeah yeah correct so probably i would just continue with uh, what i was saying so, is there a way to mute uh, or Okay, right. So why high performance is simply because it gives you a vision, it gives you a path for improvement, and you're able to set higher standards for your own self and thereby improve. And at the end of it, you are gonna be extremely happy about your own performance. You know, the, the sense of completeness and the satisfaction that gives you, I think that's amazing so and because simply because you feel really good about what you've achieved the a sense of completeness a sense of achievement and you know a feeling that is i would say in a way unparalleled because you are breaking your own milestones and you're getting better at what you're doing so that is why it's important to set yourself uh, goals and objectives to see which is the next level and in which area that you need to start improving. And by doing so, it actually gives you a sense of direction. Otherwise, you're like a headless chicken, you know, moving around, not knowing where, what you need to be doing. And therefore, it's essential to set yourself these targets on uh, to see how you can keep improving. Oh, thanks for the comment. The sense of accomplishment is very inspiring. Thank you, Sandhya. Right. So that is the reason why you need to be a high performer for your own self. I mean, forget others and uh, the organization for your own self. So who is a high performer? So a high performer is somebody who performs above average, who's faster, who's efficient, and who's very consistent in performance. So that's why I say it's important to benchmark your own self your own performance to see how you're growing up the ladder. So if any of you are into fitness and running or you know any of the athletic events, you tend to see how you're doing better. So in cases like that, you're actually benchmarking your own performance. Now, like if you look at long distance marathoners, for example, they love to break their own records. So if they've, let's say, completed a 10 kilometer in one hour, they, then the next goal they set themselves is probably 55 minutes and then 50 minutes, so on, and you know, it just goes on. So it gives you that feeling and the urge to, you know, outbeat your own self. So by doing so, you become a high performer. So it can be in any walk of life, how you are improving your own performance. So where is the high performance that you need to be doing? As I said, it's targets that you are setting your own self. So You'll have to decide on that. In, of course, in the organization context, your boss may be giving you targets and you may have to work towards that. But for your own improvement, your own self-improvement, you need to set your own targets and keep working on it. So the interesting part here is, I say a high performance is both a sprint and a marathon. You know, while it could sound contradictory because in a sprint, you're actually running very fast. Whereas in a marathon, you're not running as fast, but the distance is what matters. And a high performance is actually a mix of the two. The reason being, you need to sprint in one particular area. So let's say you've achieved your target, you know, in, uh, you know, like the 10 kilometer example that I gave you, if you achieved, you know, supposing the target you've set yourself is 45 minutes. So let's say you complete your 10 kilometer race in 45 minutes. What is next, right? So how can you get better? So if you've achieved the target, then you move on to the next area. Let's say your fitness level, or uh, maybe you want to do better in cycling, for example, you know, something else. So the main domain is like a sprint. 
but it's like a marathon because you keep changing your domains you know the, the the targets so that you can get better at what you're doing so that's why i say it's both a sprint and a marathon and i also say you need to have purposeful high performance so what is the purpose behind it right you are setting yourself targets is it just for fancy or it's just that you want to prove to somebody else or you want to prove to your own self whatever it is it's fine but get to your why get to the purpose behind it because that can be a very good driving factor for you to achieve what you want so know your purpose and set your targets that are purposeful and meaningful to you as an individual also it, it may not be practically possible for you every time to uh, set up targets in let's say 10 different areas right because you may not be able to give your very best to it each and every time so therefore having purposeful high performance like you know selecting selective areas where you want to achieve your very best and strive and get better that would make it a lot more meaningful for you and you'll be able to achieve it easier and faster so ensure that your performance is purposeful that is one so that is where is the high performance so again it's your choice so when do you do this high performance so do you have to be always striving at the same particular thing and doing i would like to think slightly differently there because you select the areas where you want to achieve the results so whatever goals that you've taken on to yourself whichever areas that you want to improve once you've selected that, work on that, right? So once you achieve mastery by practicing, and then you can move on to the next area so that you can keep improving yourself and it becomes a consistent journey. So once you've achieved in a particular area, then move on to the other areas. So how do you achieve high performance? Now, this is what is gonna be the crux of today's talk. And um, before I get into that, I would like to pause here for any questions. A purposeful high performance is self-fulfilling virtue circle. Thank you. So if there are any questions till now, I'm happy to take them. Otherwise, I will move on to how to achieve high performance and which is where the channelization comes into play. Right. So uh, let me Good pause here. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm Sanchar Mishra from my India. Uh, there is a question from Saurabh. Right. Yeah, uh, he said high performance. Uh, how, uh, how can we stay consistent when you have a lot of targets to achieve simultaneously uh, within a, a short frame of time? Right. Sure. So that is why I said, you know, it's good not to focus on like 10 different areas, but be selective you can move on one after the other if that makes sense to you or maximum two or three more than that it may not be possible for you to give your very best so limit it and focus on each area and keep moving on so that would be the best way to do it so let me tell you uh, a little story here this is a very interesting story uh, it's again about uh, this person who i was coaching so let's just say for ease the person's name is KK. KK works for a multinational and um, KK is already a high performer. So the organization wanted me to coach KK and few others so that they get even better at what they were doing. So KK was already at a, uh, a general manager level and one of the youngest in the organization worldwide at that particular level because KK was extremely talented and uh, extremely good at the work that she was doing. So just to give you a little background about KK. Um, KK during her school days was wanting to become a doctor and she was extremely intelligent and very hardworking. Unfortunately, luck was not in her favor and she missed her medical seat by one mark. She was very upset because till then all her dreams was just about medicine and being a doctor. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for her, though the her father said, you know, we could pay and get you the seat, a medical seat. She was against it. So her career totally changed and she wasn't going into the stream of 
being a doctor. So she then became a chartered accountant and uh, you know chose the finance line and uh, so for her it was like you know i need to prove myself i'm not a failure so she started putting in extra efforts and uh, though being a science student she fared very well she successfully qualified in the first attempt and she got in into this huge multinational where she started her career and this sense of drive and passion was there in her and she was a high performer like i already said so she started to grow in her career very well so almost every year or every two years she was getting promoted and she had reached the gm level you know jiffy like you know, very fast and she was again identified as one of the high performers and since a bunch of high performers were being coached uh, as per the business requirement i was in the process of coaching her now although kk was a high performer kk was having quite a lot of challenges right so what were they like so first is uh, because kk was a high performer kk was given a empty number of tasks to be performed different targets by her different i mean managers because she kept changing uh, internally to different departments as well so what had happened she felt overwhelmed like you know like i think the person who asked the question she was also given a lot of targets and at, at during that time she started getting a little bit of self doubt on on her, on her own self and her own capabilities because her counterparts were like you know quite senior compared to her in age and experience and the general talk like you know in most corporates so she was people were saying oh you know you, you don't have the experience you may not be able to do it so she started to get self doubt within herself and this self doubt then started to transform in a way that she started to have a lot of chatter in her mind and you know uh, things that weren't really encouraging and supporting her performance and this was in a way pulling her down so there was a lot of interference for her from her own self from her own mind this was one part next was she was getting stressed simply because there were too many things to handle there were a lot of tasks on her own self she was neglecting her personal time and she was just getting very stressed because she used to work for about 18 hours a day just get back home sleep back at work again and she was working incessantly without taking breaks so she was getting very stressed she had also realized by then what had happened you know till then the drive that you know she hadn't got a medical seat and she had to prove herself was a driving factor like i had mentioned so this took her all along up to now in the journey then after she was like okay i've proved myself i'm one of the youngest i'm one of the high performers i've been rewarded well i've been recognized so on and other things but after that she didn't know what she didn't really have an aim or a goal and she didn't know what next and how she should be proceeding so she didn't have any particular aim at that point in time next like i said you know she was wait, uh, working for about 18 hours a day and therefore she didn't have time for anything else i mean she just sleep and absolutely no time for family or any of her passions or interest time and lastly she was so used to and being inside a cocoon of her comfort zone that she wasn't really wanting to step out now what do i mean by this like i said she's pretty young and her family that is her parents wanted her to get married but she was so driven and focused on her career and she wasn't sure that whether she'll be able to do justice in her married life so she was trying to push and didn't want to get married this is what she was telling her parents how were deep down she was longing for, for a life partner but again she was like you know if i get married would i be able to do well in my career would i be able to do justice to balance a family and uh, my work what will be the extra work that i'd have to do by you know starting a a family because right now she's staying with her parents and everything is taken care of so she didn't want to step out of her comfort zone so the reason i'm telling this story is i thought 
most of these challenges are something pretty common the interference you know the mind chatter that happens to most of us at most times the interference from your own self the stress the lack of aim or direction at times time all of us are so busy and the comfort factor that we don't want to step out so i'm going to look at focus on these five challenges and see what can be done to overcome these five areas and you, so that you can channelize and you know be a high performer in your area of choice so the first one i spoke about was interference let me again tell you a, a short story here there was a rich merchant and he wanted to become enlightened so in his village a saint had come and you know all the other villagers started telling him that you know the saint is great he's very good so this man rushed to the saint and he told him uh, oh saint make me enlightened this is all that i want because i've had enough riches and you know i've done whatever is needed all i'm looking for is enlightenment so the saint looks at him and says no worries i'll make you enlightened all you have to do is you see the hill there just go on top of the hill sit there for an hour and meditate and you're going to become enlightened so this man was extremely thrilled he says is that all it takes all right i'm going right away so he runs towards the hill and as he was leaving the room the sage told him one minute i forgot to tell you one little thing so he says what is it he said when you're meditating there don't think of a blue monkey with a red tail because then you will not be able to get enlightened otherwise don't think of this and then you're going to be enlightened so what do you think happens as soon as the man gets to the top of the hill and he closes his eyes all he could think of was a blue monkey with a red tail so that's what happens to most of us you know there's so much of interference from our own mind there's so much of chatter i don't know if you've read this beautiful book uh, it's called the inner game of tennis it's by tim halway so he talks about two things s1 and s2 which is self one and self two so there is this mind voice that we have right so when you're like in the midst of work there's something background noise that's going on in the head that probably telling you uh, you know what is planned tonight this weekend plan or you know have you done this have you done that and it's quite normal because uh, uh, there's a study that says most people have in average about 60000 thoughts a day so while thoughts are fine how are the thoughts helping you when you're trying to focus and complete your task right so that is something that's important you need to look at so how do you overcome this interference by having focus by focusing on what you do so you may ask me how do i focus because you do keep you know uh, getting eaten up by these thoughts so obviously one is to concentrate but and how do you concentrate it's like a software program you just have to program your mind you have to work towards it and you have to keep practicing and ensure that you are in the present moment so when you're doing what you're supposed to do and complete all your focus should be there only in that task at that time so once you're done with it then you move on to the next so that is how you keep programming your mind and ensure that you are able to focus better in achieving what you want to achieve so how available are you for your own self that's a check that you need to take for and then a call that you need to take to see how are you really available for yourself for whatever that you want to do and you want to achieve right so take a pause reflect on your own self and see how you can better that and able to focus better in achieving what you want so that is the first on the interference the second we spoke about stress multitasking is something many of us try to do all the time what are your views on that um multitasking is good and bad i would say you will have to choose wisely on which areas you want to multitask on because by multitasking sometimes you could tend to lose focus and tend to lose time unless the activities are related it may or may not make sense for you to multitask so that's something 
you'll have to see how it works for yourself because you know mm -hmm. it sometimes makes sense for you to finish one particular task and then move to the other but if you're like trying to juggle between tasks it could do help at times but may not be always so you'll have to take a conscious decision on that right so uh, moving on to the second factor which is stress so let me again give you a small story here this is about a, a, a fairly young girl now yeah young girl uh, again extremely talented very intelligent and uh, a high performer in her own way however what had happened in her life this is a little filmy uh, she was in love with a person she was wanting to get married to him they were going around for almost nine years or so but her parents objected because for whatever reasons they didn't want them to get married now this was becoming a setback in her life and because of this her performance dropped in every aspect of her life like you know not just at work she was working but she was not a top performer but more than that she had a dream to become an IAS officer and she had the potential and the capabilities to do that but she was getting stressed stressed about the fact that her parents were not supporting her views on marriage and they actually wanted her to get married to somebody else so this thought was eating her up very badly and she was getting highly stressed about this so she came to me for a coaching sessions and you know what beautifully emerged out of this uh, conversations with her was deep down the cause for the stress was the fact that she did not trust her boyfriend in the sense while she loved him a lot deep down she was worried that you know what if he leaves her and you know because they're not getting married what if he goes and gets married to somebody else so whatever her parents said you know her energies were focusing on the negative things that you know it may not happen it may not work out in favor of her and this thought was eating her up and she wasn't doing anything else all her energy was getting sucked up in this negative thought so the moment she used to take her books out to study her focus was drifting and all her uh, energy was getting sucked and it was transforming into negative energy so how do you handle cases like this so i call this energy management right energy is something so important we all need energy in whatever that we do so unless you are able to channelize your energy in the right direction and make it more productive it's not going to get you anywhere so how do you again do this you will have to take a conscious call now you will have to see where and how your energy is getting drained simple things like you know you gossip about somebody your energy there's going to be a drain or you say something unpleasant about somebody is again a drain i mean while these could be small pockets if you're doing this over a period of time and continuously doing this all the positive energy that you have is going to get sucked out so if, even things like you know you overly exert yourself you uh, overly work out you know physical exercise you do too much of it again that's going to drain your energy so you need to have the right kind of balance every time that you want to do and see how best you can channelize your energy in getting what you want to achieve so the second tip is energy management the third we spoke about was the aim or the purpose right so if you don't have any particular goals or aim then you, as i said you know you're going to go around like a headless chicken and you won't know which direction you're headed because you know you want to do multiple things at the same time yes it's a form of multitasking like i said but unless there is a correlation between the two you're just going to spread yourself everywhere so you need to identify the areas where you want to do you know which is close to your heart which is which are the areas that you want to achieve where is it that you want to prove yourself and excel yourself so identify that and that is what i meant by purposeful high performance by setting yourself the kind of targets that you want to do so again i'd like to here go back to the example of kk what kk did very beautifully was you know as i said kk works in a huge multinational a global multinational and there are many verticals even in the finance domain that she was working with the many verticals and different regions so kk was taking very conscious calls very conscious decisions 
So just because a promotion was coming her way, she wouldn't take it. She, uh, after, you know, um, after a couple of months of the coaching, she had decided where she wants to get and which is the path she needs to take. So she was choosing at every point, she was making decisions to see, will this move take me closer to my ultimate aim? Because what she wanted ultimately, she realized was, she wanted to become the finance leader first at a national level and then an APAC level. And her long-term picture is to become a finance leader for the group globally. So every decision she used to weigh them, is it taking me closer to my next level, right? So anything that she used to do, even she used to take up extra assignments or you know things that uh, that she wasn't actually meant to be doing, she would take a conscious call. Is this going to take me to my next level, right? A next level of her choice, not anything else. So she was getting really, uh, you know, uh, very specific and because she was driven by purpose. So what is your driving factor? What is your purpose behind, you know, what you want to achieve? So get clear to your own self about it and work around it. That's going to help you. Uh, be more purposeful so that was the third one the fourth common one is time i'm so busy i don't have the time uh, because my hands are full i have too many things to do these are something very common that we hear but how can you overcome this right simple the art of prioritization the art of delegation and the art of essentialism right because end of the day whatever that you want to do should make meaning to you should make sense to you should add value either to you or to the people around you so throw away whatever is not essential whatever activities now you may then wonder like you know for example don't i need to relax don't i need to entertain myself yes you have to but do everything in the right balance, right? Unless you have the time, you know, the luxury of time, you need to see how you can balance. Let me again tell you a short story here. There was a, a, a king and uh, once the king had lost his way. So while he was uh, in the jungle after he lost his way, he met a man there who was kind enough and he took him out, uh, you know, back to the, the path that led the king back to the kingdom so they had a conversation and uh, the king asked him so what do you do this man was actually a pretty lazy man so he said no you know i don't have a job and every time i want to do a job you know the people in the village start backbiting about me they say you know i will not complete the task and you know so i have a very bad reputation because my enemies have created this reputation for me and uh, therefore i don't have a job so the king felt sorry for him and since he had helped him you know find his path the king said don't worry tomorrow just come to my kingdom and you can take as much riches that you want from my kingdom but finish everything that, whatever you want to take before the sunset so this man is very thrilled and he goes back home he tells his wife you know what since i helped the king the king has made me this wonderful offer so tomorrow i'm you know going to go to the kingdom and to the palace and uh, get as much riches as you want so the wife is also equally excited and she tells him great get all you know the gold uh, the precious stones gems everything that you can get take a huge bag and then go so they said okay the next day morning this man wakes up you know at a leisure pace and then the wife tells him come on now you'll have to go to the palace he says yeah yeah i'll go i'll go but you know i'm actually quite hungry now so why don't you you know make me a nice meal so the wife makes cooks a delicious meal for him he has he eats to his heart's content and then you know when you eat you want to take a nap so he says no let me just nap for like you know just half an hour and then i would go the half an hour becomes about two hours and then finally the wife shakes him and then says no go and she gives him two big bags and then this man starts walking towards the palace. Now, as he is walking towards the palace, you know, he thinks it's too hot. And then he says, okay, let me uh, rest below the tree for some time. He rests 
and then he starts seeing other people pass by and then gets into conversations with some other villagers and he loses track of time and then he's like okay yeah, i need to go to the palace and then he goes around and by the time you know he uh, again gets into some other activities by the time he reaches the palace it's almost sunset so a beautiful opportunity that he got but he couldn't manage his time properly and wisely and therefore he didn't get any of the riches so that is why <clears throat> i say it's important to prioritize and if you're having too many tasks learn to delegate you know i say the people at home and the people at work especially for women they are partners don't think the world <clears throat> rests only on your shoulders seek help when needed right so it's all a matter of spreading it across and not thinking that only uh, you hold the key to everything so that is something that's important so you need to learn the art of time management you know we all speak about roi which is return on investment but if you look at roti that's return on time invested right so i say what is the worthfulness so whatever actions you're doing how is it being worthy of what you want to achieve is it even worthful it's adding value to you or to somebody else so take a call and take wise decisions that's how you'll be able to manage your time like me for instance i i have not watched sorry okay so me for instance i have not watched tv in the last 16 years or so i've just gave up because i used to be a tv addict and i realized that it was taking away a lot of my time and just being quite unproductive so i gave it up so i'm not saying you should give it up but you'll have to see where your time is going and how you can manage it better i'm also into uh, art of living and uh, that has been a game changer in my life simple breathing exercises and i think that gives me a lot of energy helps me to de-stress and helps me to be focused so find out what is your sweet spot you know what is it that gives you energy uh, you know what is it that's helping you in being focused you know it could be things like cooking gardening running whatever but whatever works ensure that you have time to de-stress on such areas so yeah i think we covered the fourth one which is worthfulness you know for you for the time management part how worthy is it for you it's something that you need to take a call on the last one being the comfort zone well, i think there are some questions that have come in the meantime chanchal you so, want to ask yeah yeah ma'am more query from mathri uh how do we measure high performance sorry how do we could you repeat that please uh, how do we uh, how do we measure high performance how do we measure high performance is that what it is yeah yeah okay great okay so it's very simple like i said in the beginning you are the judge right only you would know so you will have to set yourself a benchmark or a target to see how you are improving let's say your efficiency levels or whichever area of your choice you will have to peg yourself if it is quantifiable great then it becomes easy if it like you know i gave the running example so you know like the time was a factor you want to complete the 10 kilometers in 60 minutes then 55 minutes then 50 minutes now these are quantifiable so if you can quantify it great if not you will have to uh, give it your own measuring factor because you are the judge now only you would know it could be like your satisfaction levels it could be your own assessment of the performance or whatever metric that works for you right so you must just that a be able to benchmark yourself against the previous one and the current one so that is what is going to help you there so you have to set up the rules because it's your game end of the day right so it's up to you to see whatever uh, factors that you want to factor in and how much weightage you want to give for each of them so i hope that answers your question uh, the next is the comfort zone this magic happens outside the comfort zone 
right so unless you're able to step out of your comfort zone and you know break that cocoon mm. you will not be able to become the butterfly that you want to become so from a caterpillar to the butterfly that's the journey of breaking the cocoon so you will have to see how you can step out of your comfort zone so here i'd like to quote my own example uh, i never had intentions of becoming an author a family vacation to cambodia uh, cambodia which is in the far east is what made me an author i must say because we had been to the killing fields in cambodia uh, i don't know if you know the story but from 1970 to 74 there was a mass genocide in cambodia innocent people were butchered mercilessly and i mean it was just too much too much of barbaric activities even today if you go to the killing fields you know you walk there you'll find pieces of bones and nails you know it's it's really gruesome and there's also a huge tower that's filled with uh, bones and skulls and you know they classified on gender and how each one was killed it's too brutal so when i saw that something triggered in me and i was like how can man be so cruel that to innocent people you know what can be the repercussions if uh, man becomes so cruel so unknowingly i have i had weaved a story in my head and uh, a little voice in my mind said you know why don't you write it as a story but like most of us i was like i'm not an author who's going to read my book what will people say and you know i said no i'm not going to write about it but this story kept coming back to me every time and then somehow i was kind of you know debating and you know trying to muster the courage to see if i should write so it was at that time the it was almost a year after i came back from cambodia i luckily chanced upon a 100 day book authoring challenge so that i said okay this is something that can help me you know towards my completion and you know how it is in a corporate you're so used to deadlines and targets so i made use of that I launched my first book which is called The Glance of the Unknown and I had a lot of butterflies in my stomach I didn't know what sort of reception you know what will people say I also had a lot of phobia Tai Chi and I launched the book and uh, luckily the reception was pretty good and I started getting good comments and that gave me a lot of encouragement and like Sandhya said that's what got me one of the award that said 100 inspiring authors of india so if i was you know remaining in my comfort zone and not wanting to step out of it then this wouldn't have been possible so you know are you restricting yourself or you know are you trying to see how you can come out of your comfort zone now if coming out of your comfort zone is a challenge i'll give you another tip here expand your comfort zone so you know what i mean by that so when i started telling people that i have come up with a book most people assumed it was a finance book because finance professional with about 20 plus years of experience they expected it to be a finance book so people started asking me hey where's your finance book so now i had broken my comfort zone and writing was now kind of within my ambit and therefore i came up with the second book what the finance and that's become a best seller now so the comfort zone restricts you to see if you can break it and expand it and oh yes i expanded it again because i came up with my third book uh, which is a a free audio book it's downloadable on audible.in it's called the power of high performance coaching like if you just google it on uh, i open a series and then you'll find it so it's a free download do hear it and let me know so now what did i do i didn't step out of my comfort zone because once i stepped out i just tried to expand it and see which are the areas you know that can come under uh, this and take it forward and also yeah i've started my own youtube channel where i keep giving you know two to three minute talks on different aspects so these are little steps baby steps but to see how you can keep moving ahead so see what works for you this is just an example to you know make you think on those lines so these are um, you know this i say is discipline because it's bliss plus discipline and when you merge the two it's discipline so that you know you still end up bliss but you have the discipline of doing it consistently because high performance is also about consistency so i also say you you 
are outstanding and unique, right? So if U was an acronym, I say you are outstanding and unique. Each person is different. Each person has so much potential and so many capabilities. And it's up to you to discover them and see how you can keep upping your own game, right? So look at a big picture, see how you can contribute, how you can grow and discover the purpose behind what you want to do. I think those are some of the key things. So I think if I were to summarize you know, the five main things on channelizing your high performance. You need to channelize your attention, which is the focus part. Channelize your energy so that you can de-stress yourself. Channelize your purpose so that you have a mission and you're driven by something. Channelize your time in the right way and channelizing your comforts so that these can help you grow and become a high performer in whatever walk of life that you want. So I would also like you to hear from you. I would like to you to take a pause and reflect on some of these things. What is your focus? How are you de-stressing yourself? How are you going to achieve your purpose? What are the worthful actions that you're taking? And how you're planning to step out of your comfort zone? So it will be nice if I can hear some of your thoughts on this or you know some of the answers to the questions and what are the takeaways that you are planning to action in your life yes with that i'm like done with the talk and i would love to hear uh, your comments and answers to the questions that i've asked you anybody who wants to go first Chanchal, you have questions? No, ma'am, still not. Uh, so we are waiting for the questions. Maybe if not questions, I would love to hear responses on to the five questions that I asked. Like, where is your focus? How are you de-stressing yourself? How are you going to achieve the purpose that you want? What are the worthful actions? And how you're planning to step out of your comfort zone? Which area that you want to do? question Maybe, uh, uh, from Saurabh again. Yeah, uh, does playing games, yeah, uh, does playing games help you uh, de help you to de uh, refocus? Do, yeah. When you do so, know uh, when it is too much. Playing games, is it? Could you repeat the question for me? Uh, does playing game help you distress and refocus? Question right. uh, again, uh, when do you know uh, when it is too much? Right. So definitely, you know, if games, if you are a games person, if you love sports, then definitely go for it because it does help you to de-stress. Anything that you like and you're passionate about helps you to de-stress undoubtedly. So when do you know that it gets too much? When, as I said, you know, you're not able to balance your priorities right, then it becomes too much. So only you would know you are the judge for it. But too much of anything is not good. I hope that answers you. What else? Yeah, it is taking a while to unmute the line. Uh, I had a question, Sangeeta. Uh, many yeah. times, uh, mm. when we say we have prioritized, some mm. of the priorities are choices we can make, given that we I mean, assume say that again, some of the priorities are not choices we can make, given that right. we assume certain responsibilities, or we right. commit to certain relationships, or we commit to certain things that then gets overwhelming for us, whether it is right. the job we do or at a family level or just the way situations emerge. 
so many times uh, when we look at uh, women especially who drop out of work most of the time they it is a reprioritizing decision where they decide that yes i can't manage it all but then that uh, makes another woman lose drop out of the professional uh, um, race in some form so right. what's your thoughts on um, these choices of reprioritization which happen not because you want it that way but that's the most logical alternative right so even when you are reprioritizing like let me give just this example that happened very recently at work so my company secretary a uh, lady again and uh, she got a baby recently so she was working i mean even after her maternity leave she came back she was working i think it's been now about almost 6 months since she came back from her maternity leave and uh, you know i gave her the flexibility so i she comes in only like maybe 3 to 4 times a week and not full hours rest of the time she works from home i mean it's fine so i gave her this liberty and she was trying to manage now unfortunately for her things at home weren't too good and uh, she had to put in her papers and she's still on notice period right now and though you know i convinced her to see if she'll be able to continue her uh, career unfortunately things didn't work out in her favor and her priorities right now are family and therefore she, you know she was in tears and uh, she said no unfortunately i'll have to put in my papers so why she is putting in the good thing that she is doing is she is doing a practice from home i mean rather she is starting her practice from home and she is planning to tie up with uh, small smaller cs firms and you know focus so she is having her career she is able to generate things for her as well and and at a later date when the child is little big she would always come back you know resume her career from where she is left so the idea here is right now the priority is family compared to her career but at the same time for her the career is important as well so what she has done is to ensure she is in touch and she's doing a, her uh, smaller practice right so you will have to just think through to see how you would be able to overcome the particular challenge that you have so that you can try and get the best of both worlds yes in this case the best for her is would obviously to be in a job but because of her family constraint she's not able to do that and therefore this is the second best option that she's doing so you will have to prioritize so right now for her her family and the child is of top priority so it's even among the priorities you will have to start prioritizing is what i would say it's interesting that you say this because one of the topics we are contemplating for the next webex is how mm. to manage yourself when you are on a break and how to okay. keep yourself connected with your uh, right. with, with with your fraternity and uh, right. with your education so that when you come back from a break you don't feel irrelevant so that's one of the topics we are contemplating Fantastic. so this was a very very nice example you have given <laughs> any more questions so it is uh, uh, sandhya i think one thing i would definitely love to add here is i think you know compared to the times when uh, we started our careers to now i think the world has opened up so many things for everybody I mean, not just women like you know there are so many newer careers newer options newer things that you can pursue, pursue like even this work from home for example i mean you know it's it's such a blessing and if you so if you're able to capitalize and learn to balance this the opportunities are umpteen right and even this thing for uh, opening up for women uh, you know like the 6 months maternity break the uh, the crash facilities for example i mean there are so many options available as against let's say two decades back so i think it's one of the best times to be in that way and to see how you can capitalize on it and keep uh, you know moving on and also the uh, the outlook of men in the the, the gen you know the, the generations that are coming now is a little more open i would say you know compared to the previous generations because the awareness levels have increased 
so that way i think you need to learn to see how to make the best of everything uh, ma'am we have uh, more questions so yes. from uh haris is uh, saying what is your suggestion on reading books well uh, reading sorry will reading books what is your suggestion on reading books right uh, and yeah or will reading helps of course <laughs> of course books are a world of knowledge so you'll have to choose the right books again to see how you can upskill yourself it could be a, a something from your domain something from an expert or something that you want to learn definitely books are a great source of learning and knowledge so it's up to you to again the, pick the right choices and uh, see the areas that you want to upskill yourself asuria asking sometimes the high performance is affected by other non performers uh, how to how do hello with it sorry how do yeah how to deal with it right how sure absolutely very good question your performance especially if you're on a team could get pulled down if you have other non performers um unfortunately there's no much solution to it because if you put even one rotten tomato with a bunch of good tomatoes everything is going to get rotten so the good way would be to eliminate it eliminate the rotten tomato or the you know non performers if it is under your control if not the other thing would be to see if you can move away from the non performers and you know join in a place that where you are able to contribute more you know prove yourself so that you feel good and you feel you've added value and contributed to the team so either move your team or the organization or see if you can do away with the non performers i mean we have another question from varsha so mm -hmm. i'm just giving her mic so she can ask sorry your voice is breaking i can't hear you i'm just giving mic to varsha so she can ask yes sure Yeah, Varsha, you can ask your question. I do know she has got uh, the access that you have given her, Ranjit. You want to try read the question again? Okay, okay. I'm just uh, reading. Uh, she is asking why. uh while working in a team how do you know uh, uh, how do you make sure you are able to control your own time and focus given that you are managing multiple tasks with multiple people to be precise if you keep putting off fires all the time how do you make sure files do not uh Uh, do you make sure the fires uh, do not consume you if you are fire fighting all the time your processes are not in place you need to address that go to the root cause fix it at that level because fire fighting day in and day out is not the best for you the team and the organization so you will have to ensure that the basics are in place so that this doesn't become a routine you will have to get these fixed at the earliest get to the root cause level yeah so the again asked something uh, you talked about expanding your comfort zone does expanding your comfort zone has to be done by coming out of your existing comfort zone uh, question and another thing uh, also how do you decide to leave a comfort zone it could be your expertise and you may be really good at it 
could you please share your views here okay so if you're good at something keep doing it there's nothing wrong in it right so that is pretty straightforward now that when i say step out of your comfort zone you're probably looking at it in a very limited way to say this from here i'm moving here i'm not saying that if you're good at this then get to this then to this so you're actually expanding it right so that is what i meant by expand your comfort zone i don't know if i answered your question but you don't have to restrict yourself to just one thing but you'll have one plus one plus another one or how many ever more you want so you have a wider range of things that you want to do because if you're in your comfort zone everything is going to remain the same you're not doing anything differently you're not thinking anything differently you're not able to go beyond that because the comfort zone becomes like a barrier to you because you're just happy being where you are but if you want to progress then you need to break that step out so that doesn't mean you'll have to give up what you're doing right now because if you're good at it especially continue doing that and see what else you can take up Uh, we have another question from our uh, uh, chief advisor, Mr. Kim Kocher, uh, chief advisor, I India. Uh, how often or when? Sorry, I can't hear you. Priorities, priorities or... I can't hear you. Sorry, your voice is breaking. Yeah, yeah. The question is how often or when should we relook at our priorities or goals? when should we relook our priorities or goal okay great question you need to constantly keep relooking at your goals so that you know you set one goal you want to achieve it is it the right thing for you to do is is it the best thing for you to do you'll have to take a call so once you think you've achieved this goal get to the next level next level and so on so you and priorities as well you would know the right thing because if you have to be a high performer you will have to prioritize if you have to manage your time better you have to prioritize so you know there's this lovely matrix i'm forgetting the name the urgent and um, uh, important if you just google on it i'm sure you'll get it what is urgent what is important you know what is not urgent what is not important so if you're able to categorize it into that that will give you a much better idea on what you're supposed to do but you'll have to periodically keep looking and you know when i say not necessarily you'll have to look at it daily but then set yourself like short-term goals medium-term goals and long-term goals so on the need basis you can keep uh, looking at it on the short term medium term and long term and also to see how you're progressing against each of them Chanchal, if there are no further questions, uh, Sangeeta wanted uh, to finish this session at 3.45. So we are almost near the clock. So if there are no further questions, then um, maybe we can um, close the session. Sangeeta, I really wanted to thank you for this time. There are uh, very interesting stories that you gave, anecdotes. Uh, I like the five wives and one husband. You as an acronym, outstanding and unique. So very, very interesting story. And the good part is most of the stories that you gave were not, not uh, you know, some uh, distant story away out of the world. These were stories that we, are, we relate to every day. People like us, normal. And those were the stones that you brought to light. So that was really inspiring. Thank you so much for making this time, Gita. Uh, we will be re we recorded this session. Uh, we right. will be posting this online, so people who missed the session today will be able to awesome. view it uh, uh, later. Uh, thank you so much. Really My appreciate pleasure. you thank making. You. It. Yeah, thank you so much. See you guys. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank uh, you. We have one more question. Uh, if you have one minute. Take, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh, question is, I feel if one is a high performer, he ends up being a workaholic and uh, there is a pressure of not delivering results. What to do? <laughs> if a person is a, worko a high performer, he's a workaholic. Uh, you can be a smart worker rather than a hard worker, is what I would say. So if you know how to prioritize, if you can learn how to delegate, 
and you know take help from your team i think that should uh, help you because you know you're not the only one who has to take the burden okay that's why we say it's a team so that you know everybody has a role to play so see how you can spread the burden across your team and you don't have to keep uh, be the only person to do the work because then you're going to get burnt out and the consistency for uh, that's required to be a high performer may soon burn you out so take a call there yes ma'am any other questions no question ma'am okay sure so i would also like all of you to just reflect and i mean an answer to your own self maybe if not in this webinar those five questions that i asked you probably i can repeat them for you where is what are your focus area so where is the focus how are you de-stressing how are you going to achieve your purpose how are you managing your time and how are you and where are you planning to step out of your comfort zone so just think through that reflect your own self answer to your own self you don't have to answer to anybody in particular but once you think through that it will help you to get even better and wish you all the very best and stay safe right so if that is it then um, we can formally close the webinar Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.